Hello and welcome to my fourth lecture in organic chemistry. Today we're going to talk about aromatic compounds. Aromatic compounds are those that include a benzene ring in their structure. Uh, they can have more than one benzene ring, but the ones that we're responsible for will have a single benzene ring. Um, th this ring structure is a highly uh, chemically stable substance. Um, as, as such, it reacts like a saturated compound. Saturated compounds like the alkanes undergo very slow substitution reactions. And we'll be dealing with, sub, with uh, reactions of organic compounds in a subsequent lecture. Suffice it to say for now that uh, alkanes, are, are saturated compounds, go through a substitution reaction. Although when we see benzene ring, uh, the benzene ring structure here in a minute, it, it sort of looks like it's an unsaturated structure and should go through a, a more rapid addition reaction. Of course, the chemical formula for benzene is C6H6, and structurally it looks like this. So on the left, we have the full structural diagram. You'll notice there's a six-carbon ring structure, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then every second bond is thought to be a double bond. And each of the carbons has a single hydrogen attachment. On the right is the same molecule represented with a line diagram. <clears throat> and just to restate it then, each corner of the benzene ring is occupied by a carbon. And each is further attached to a single hydrogen. In terms of stereochemistry, each of the carbons has an AX3 general formula which is to say that it's trigonal planar around each and every one of the carbons, having three bonds, or three bonding regions, a single bond to a hydrogen, and two bonds to nearest neighbor carbons. And the bond angles here are all 120 degrees. Because of this, the entire 12-atom benzene ring structure exists on a plane. Um, Benzene appears to resonate, resonate which uh, hopefully you recall from grade 11, the theory of resonance. It appears to have electronic switching between um, neighboring carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds. And we draw the resonance structure of benzene like this. So if you look at the benzene structure on the left, you'll see that the double bonds occupy this position, this position, and this position. And then, according to the theory of resonance, they switch, and they uh, occupy. Uh, an instant later, they occupy the positions of the neighboring bonds, and this switches back and forth. Uh, this was the theory of resonance, which was used to describe the nature of certain bonding. We now know resonance is is, is not exactly what's happening. There is no electron switching. In fact, um, the second bond in a, in any double bond is provided by what are called pi electrons. And pi electrons, they don't exist in the plane of the molecule. They exist in what's called a molecular orbital, which is a region of space both above and below the benzene ring where these pi electrons uh, move. And I think on the next page, we, um, we have a diagrammatic representation of that sort of molecular orbital. Uh, chemically, what we know is that in any given benzene ring, all six bonds are of equal strength and equal length. They're, they're longer than single bonds, but they're, sorry, they're, they're shorter than single bonds, but they're longer than double bonds. So they're about a bond and a half in strength. And, and this is consistent with, our, uh, with our, our current understanding. The molecular orbital adds some strength to each and every one of the bonds in the benzene ring. And as we've said, each aromatic compound had, contains at least one benzene ring. And this course is limited to those compounds that have a single benzene ring. Oh, and here's the representation I was talking about. What you see here in black is the, the, the six carbon benzene ring structure. And then the red sort of donut shapes, both above and below the benzene ring, is where these, uh, these pi electrons, these uh, electrons that supply uh, what we thought was a double bond, exist. They don't exist in the space between the carbons. Naming aromatic compounds isn't quite as straightforward as naming straight-chain compounds, like the aliphatics. 
quite often more than one name is acceptable. And because there are so many compounds, uh, we have to put limits on the number of names that we're responsible for. Um, uh, the, the complication is that the benzene ring can either be the root of the name uh, or it can be referred to as phenyl in, as a prefix uh, and an attachment to a straight chain hydrocarbon. So quite often the same compound will have two commonly accepted names. And below I have a couple of examples for you of where both naming rules apply. So the molecule on the left then, you'll see has got a single carbon attachment to a benzene ring. Of course, single carbon attachments are methyl groups. So this would be methyl benzene. However, um, if we use this alternate naming scheme, we refer to the benzene as a phenyl group and this becomes phenyl methane. That's an equally acceptable name. The second example here then, could uh, be called, it, it has a two carbon attachment to a benzene ring, so this could be called ethyl benzene. However, if we refer to the phenyl, or rather the benzene ring as a phenyl side group, it becomes phenyl ethane. So two parallel naming systems, both are acceptable. Here's, I'm going to take you through a few examples then, and um, conclude the lecture. And I'll refer you to any homework that your teacher um, assigns in this area. Here I have a, a benzene ring with two methyl groups attached. And they're both the same size, so we know it doesn't matter which one we choose as one and which one we choose as two, as long as they're one, two. You want to count this clockwise rather than going counterclockwise and going one, five. So this would be one, two, dimethyl benzene. When you have two attachments like this, um, the naming scheme, when you use the phenyl side, uh, side chain, the phenyl prefix, becomes too complex for this course. So when you have more than one attachment around the benzene ring, stick to benzene as the root of the name. 1,2-dimethylbenzene. Here we have a, a, another benzene ring, again with, with two methyl substitutes. However, the lowest total makes this 1,3-dimethylbenzene. 1,3-dimethylbenzene. And here's another dimethylbenzene. However, the methyls are not in the 1,2 or 1,3 position. They're in the 1,4 positions. This is 1,4-dimethylbenzene. Here we have two attachments to the benzene ring. One's an ethyl group and the other is a methyl group. And again, we number these alphabetically, so this becomes 1-ethyl-4-methyl-benzene. Slightly different variation on a, on a similar uh, structure. We've got an ethyl group at the first position, and we give it the first position because it's alphabetically E before M, and the methyl is at the second position. So this is 1-ethyl-2-methyl-benzene. And these molecules are isomers of one another. These, these are structural isomers. Same formula, different, different arrangement of the atoms. 1-ethyl, 2-methyl benzene. Um, this is a slightly different molecule. It's not an isomer. You'll see we've got an ethyl at the first position and an ethyl at the second position. So this is 1,2-diethyl benzene. I think that brings it to an end. Yeah, it does. Um, hopefully you found that of some use, and we'll see you again next time when we talk about, um, I believe it's organic chemical reactions. Thank you.